Now, one unique thing that, that I didn't really realize but before I took this job about the Sun Belt was we're the only Texas school in the Sun Belt, uh, which I think is really cool. So I'm uh, really excited to, to uh, represent the state of Texas as a proud Texan uh, in the Sun Belt and, and get this thing going. Um, you know, obviously, when, when I took the job, we hit the ground running recruiting, and some of the biggest uh, recruiting wins that we had um, during the off season was retaining uh, some of our players that, that entered the portal. Uh, so we're really excited about that. We've, we've signed over 50 um, uh, scholarship players since I've taken the job um, and, and gotten uh, numerous walk-ons. Um, I think when it's all said and done, uh, when we get to fall camp, uh, over 90 of our players will be from the state of Texas. That's one of our mottos that when I took the job, the hashtags is take back Texas. And uh, just implying that, that we're going to recruit Texas high school kids. Uh, we, you know, we signed seven when I took the job. Um, we've already got a couple committed. And uh, uh, just, just whether we sign them uh, out of the high school ranks, uh, throughout the portal, um, JUCO, uh, we're going to make our money uh, in the state of Texas. Tired of winning the tailgate but losing the games? We can't help that. But we can tell you what the hell is up with each team and what's going on across sunny San Marcos. Texas State fans, get on your feet. You're listening to Squaring Around with Jacob Rodriguez and Andrew Zimmel. Andrew, I wanted to talk to somebody this week that perhaps suffered more than us as a writer for this team, a student at this university, and uh, just like a journalist at, at, at large. You know, Ishmael Johnson, Dave Campbell's Texas Football, joining us shortly. I don't think anybody suffered more than me. What do you mean? You? Somebody yeah, suffered. Right. You live in North Dakota. I'm sorry. I forget about yeah, that. Yeah. Let's, you know, in the four years that we lived there, though, maybe Ish had it worse than us, but also. Um, you saw, the, you talk, saw a bowl eligible team at least. Yeah, I mean, we I still, I will still put my four years against anybody else's four years at that university uh, when it comes to just insanity. So shout out to him though. No, you're right. Ish was. Uh, it's a fun. It's a fun interview. We go all the way from um, their pick to be the best quarterback in the conference or in the in the state, all the way to just fun stories from his life at a as a Bobcat. Oh, uh, you might remember. Last week, week before, when we told you Ethan Ferris got drafted by the Detroit Tigers, he recently just said, hey, I'm going to be a Bobcat next year. Woo! So the slugger of the year from, what is that, uh, the Springs, Cypress, Woods area, yes. um, slugger of the year coming to Texas State. Slam Marco seems like a perfect fit to me. Yeah. Here's the Ish. Ish, I know you've been like super busy with a bunch of media days across the state. It feels like every day you're at yeah. a new one, new event, new event. Yeah. More boats, parties, <laughs> next bus, plane, Lady Gaga. <laughs> no sleep. Bus, club, another club, another club, plane, next place. No sleep, no fear. Nobody believed in me. Have you been able to see Barbie or Oppenheimer in all this? <laughs> I saw Oppenheimer. I have not seen Barbie yet. I'm waiting for the the Barbie hype to kind of die down so I can get a seat. Uh, I saw Oppenheimer last Thursday, Saturday, Saturday. It was fantastic. I loved it. I forgot it was three hours, though, so I got like the late showing. And so I was there. I got out of the theater. I checked my watch. and It was like one, one o'clock. I was like, oh, God, damn. That, that's something I did not realize. <laughs> I didn't realize that San Antonio had like one of the like IMAX 70 millimeter ones where yeah, you know, yeah. Christopher Nolan tells you to see a movie in a certain way. You should do it. And I was so, about to like, say, you gotta that's, listen to that's why I haven't been able to, to see it yet is because it's just packed every day. And then over the, I guess like the first weekend that they had it last Friday, mm -hmm. uh, it was just like shitting the bed. Like they had to just keep, they just kept putting people in the regular theaters from the seven. Right, right. So, yeah, I'm gonna, I need, I need, I only saw it in the regular. I need to see it in the in IMAX with the way it was, the way God intended. Oh. I pirated it and watched it on an iPod Nano. <laughs> Barbie, Barbie has kind of taken over my life, though. I had a flight. dream last night uh, where I'm singing. Uh, you know, I'm just Ken. I'm just Ken. Where I see the love, she sees a friend. 
but I need to, uh, apparently everybody yeah. loves the soundtrack. I need to see the sound. I need to see it just to get into the soundtrack. It's Dude, like La La sound- Land for, you know, like, <laughs> right. yeah. No, this blows La La Land out of the water. Honestly. Straight up. Yeah. This, if it was, let me tell you, if it was Moonlight or B- the Barbie movie, I could see where people were upset. But sure. this, this movie just kicked ass. I loved it. It was amazing. Okay. I'll have to check it out. I need that one. And I need, I still need Mission Impossible, the new one. I will say if the Kens would be totally different and like uh, Kenlandia, what do they call it, Zimmel? Uh, the Ken version <laughs> the of Kendom. The Kendom would be totally different if they saw LeBron James play basketball. <laughs> like, <laughs> I think if sports was introduced in that movie, it would be a totally different story. Uh, welcome <laughs> yeah, to Squaring right. Around, everybody. We're here to talk about <laughs> uh, the Sunbelt Conference Media Days with Ishmael Johnson from Dave Campbell's Texas Football. Ish, thanks for joining us. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I guess. For me, I walked away the same kind of way I walked away from the spring game. Kind of just like, ooh, what comes next? Like, I'm excited. Um, I don't know. I guess this was like some of the first time I didn't hear GJ go like, we're going to score 51 points a game, and this is going to be exactly like UIW. It was kind of like a welcome to the Sun Belt moment, which I guess is to be expected when you have like a room full of nerds that can be like, hey, you know, this defense has held every single team possible to such and such yards a game. And, you know, I don't know. Uh, every year is different. Um, and you, obviously, whoever our quarterback is going to be, that will we'll cater to, to his skill set. Um, but, you know, I'm, I'm excited about where we're heading. Um, you know, we've been able to have a couple of walkthroughs and, and the guys are, um, you know, the new guys are starting to catch on and, and uh, really buy in with what we're doing. No, like I, I get I get that. It was definitely a lot more. I don't want to say measured, but it definitely was. You can tell he's not just talking to like us, right? Like people who have seen him before, um, or like Texas State fans or alumni that have probably heard some of that before. He was definitely talking to like a wider audience about what to kind of expect. And I don't know. I wonder uh, part of it because last week I was at uh, THSCA coaching school, and Kenny was also there with with most of the staff, and it was kind of a similar demeanor, right? Like I asked him some stuff just chatting on the side. And he was like, he was pretty candid about like, you know, about, about about like optimism, right? Like usually when you talk to a lot of guys off the record, they're kind of like, they sometimes give you a little bit more pessimism and a little bit more like, actually, here's some issues that we have. Right. It wasn't really like that. Like he really seems a lot of the specifics I asked him, he was optimistic about, he was like, it was very much like, yeah, actually there's, this is just competitive. This is just like, we're in it was a really good direction. And I feel like, I feel like he's really like out of, I guess, out of like salesman mode and more into like really getting into like ball coach mode, which talking with him, if you talk to him about like, just like without, you know, just like in in, in uh, uh, everyday life, he is a ball coach, right? Like he didn't call plays at UIW, but he is, he knows like scheme and he loves like, like that aspect of the game a lot. And so I wonder if he's just kind of like mentally shifting into that. He knows ball is what you're telling us. He knows ball. He knows ball. Who would have thought? I, I think I think it's too that he's not having to go get transfer guys anymore. Like there's no God, more. Yeah, where you're they're getting, all here. <laughs> yeah, you're not getting a clip. He's not going to clip this and send it to you and be like, "Hey, look, I this is how high I think of this." It is funny that you did talk about like the uh, the pessimism off the record from some of these coaches because mm-hmm. I do remember talking to some coaches off the record uh, Texas State in the last couple of years where it was like actually like let me let me give you the real lowdown on what this right. corner the cornerback situation really is like we got some guys that we might be transitioning from wide receiver to corner and you're like yeah does that mean they can't catch or like what do you I was about to say are, are they just do they just absolutely kill it in the in the DB drills or does it mean that we actually just need some guys as I can sort of defend. <laughs> yeah. Like I, I will never forget. I was a freshman when Withers was there and that mm-hmm. was a conversation we had after a press conference. It was like Kef and me and him. And it was mostly Kef, but it was like, I was there, but uh, mm-hmm. we were talking about that corner situation. And I remember him looking us dead in the face and was like, yeah, this is not going to be pretty this week. <laughs> this is going <laughs> to be a tough one. Yeah. Which I, I this leads me to the, the, my next point. Mm-hmm. I have been on this corner of like the the idea that we're putting 50 points up a game in the Sun Belt is insane. Um, I yeah, that's fair. I'm, so let me ask you: 50 points a game that doesn't seem realistic at all, does it? Right. No, absolutely not. <laughs> does 30 a game even seem realistic in the Sun Belt West? That's like pretty loaded to defense. Yeah, that's going to be that's still going to be upper echelon. I have to look at the rankings to see last year's see exactly who put up those numbers last year, but that still seems kind of 
there's just so many moving pieces, and especially on offenses here, right? We still don't know the starting quarterback. Obviously, uh, from what I was told, Lincoln Perry is a big loss, but he wasn't going to be necessarily the guy this year like he was last year. Uh, wide receivers, talents there, but there's still not – we still don't know, right? Like we know Ashton Hawkins, and that's kind of it. Um, and so there's talent around, and there's like, you know, I guess like if everything clicks, then yeah, sure, obviously. I think that that's something that could happen, but – um yeah to to kind of have that expectation is going to be a little bit of a a little bit of a jump for me i'm going to go even as far as say this even if everything clicks i don't think that Mm -hmm. that's like a realistic expectation because i was looking at it this way jmu makes the jump from fcs to fbs but they were Mm -hmm. an incredible defensive team their offense was so so i mean but they were beating the hell out of teams like north dakota state and south dakota state who are really good defensive teams as well so it was like yeah put it let's put it this way 30th 30th would be just below, so I believe Georgia Southern and Georgia State were the highest offenses uh, at 30, 30 points and 30 point, 30 and a half points. And that put them at top 45 in the country if they were, if they punch into that 30, uh, 30 point mark. And you talk about those two teams, and it's like they weren't even that good in the East. You know what I mean? Like, so even putting up those numbers didn't really do anything, doesn't translate to wins. So I just, I, I'm concerned about that aspect of like the team building for, for Kenny because mm-hmm. I think. Maybe he's different than Spavadol, but I think a lot of these offensive coaches have the same mindset where it's like, well, okay, I'm going to score on everybody. What's next? And it's like, that's not, I don't think that that's how this is going to work. The house yeah, ever no, was, though, JMU. I miss how candid good. he was in some of his pressers too. I'm sorry. Ish. God, no, no, it's fine. I, I remember, God, I remember going through that. That first season with him was might have been the worst season. Oh yeah, easily. <laughs> um, but uh, that, I mean, it brings up an interesting point because like, I feel like everybody talks about, and us included at, at DCTF, like, you know, obviously GJ Kinney and Malik Hornsby and Mac Leftwich, right? We want to, I don't feel like a lot of people are talking about Jonathan Packey and like what exactly he's going to do, you know, like well, they're going to be multiple, right? They've said that a bunch, but what exactly does that mean? What's their base? Um, I think the past couple of years, really like going on from, I'm trying to think, probably, Texas, I would say Texas State's been very considering their 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 trajectory in, in FBS. Uh, I should be going like this. I'm going up, or I should be going this way. Uh, their their trajectory in FBS, their ascension on defense has been pretty good, right? You remember Randall McCray. You remember Coach Woods under Withers. Those offense, the offenses were the reasons why those teams were really bad. Those defenses probably nationally average, right? Considering everything else. That was a godsend. And then, of course, Zach Spavadol last year. I think he had, you know, uh, he, they were a top 50 defense, I think, by every metric. And so I, I I think, I don't know, it's been a long time since he had a good offense in Texas State, obviously. But I think for as relatively successful defense has been for Texas State, no one's really talking about, like, Jonathan Packey and what he's potentially going to run. Well, and that's a, I, that's a really good point because I thought Zach did a really good job, and I thought it was more of the underrated thing about that team last year, a team that was super disappointing, but at the sure. same time, like the the defense did look really good at some points. Go back and look at a lot of the metrics, and I think even – I can't remember. I read this somewhere, but it was like if Texas State had like a below-average offense, they go to a bowl because yeah. that defense was so good. Their offense was putrid, right? And that's where it went bad, and – the uh, the defense was legitimately like top, uh, like I said, top fifty, top forty by every metric. According, of course, they gave up a lot of raw numbers because the offense couldn't stay on the field. But, um, but like defensively, there wasn't a lot to fix, and so that's why honestly, that's a little. That's why I was a little surprising that Zach Spavadol didn't pick up another. He, I think he's a position coach at Maryland. I think now, um, that's why it was a little surprising for me. But, I mean, that's three solid defensive coordinators they've had over the last five years, and. So I'm just wondering, like, is it do they need to strike kind of pretty well? And with Patkey, I'm not sure. Um, I know a lot of Miami fans uh, weren't too happy with him when he was there under Manny Diaz. Um, but again, that's a different different boat. Who knows, right? Difference difference playing ULM and then placing playing Clemson. You know right, I mean? right, exactly, exactly. Uh, how much do you miss Tyler Jones when you watch Texas State play football? <laughs> uh, see, this is. This is an interesting question for me because obviously I like I miss watching him play quarterback, but uh, he blocked me on Twitter his senior year because <laughs> <laughs> means so, took fire. Story time. Um, so it was my first year as a beat writer, as the sorry, as the, the editor at the Daily Record, 
And so that was my first year covering the team on my own. Joe had left to Missouri. And so that whole year, again, awful, 2016. Um, my freshman year. Yeah, yeah. It was, you remember how bad it was. Um, they, oh, yeah. the, I, the Ohio game was incredible, and then that was that was about it. Um, so Tyler Jones was a senior that year, and of course he had come off. He was on pace to break like every passing record, every career passing record. Now, obviously, you realize he did not do that because that offense was bad, and so he didn't put up nearly basically any numbers. Well, I I want to do a senior day story on like, hey, here's a guy who came in, had probably aspirations of greatness, and his last year, all of a sudden, it's a massive rebuild, and he's the only senior, and like, it's just, he, it's kind of, I basically, like, it was a story about like him being stuck between a rock and a hard place of like, you know, I'm a senior, but also this is a rebuilding team, this team's going to move on without me. I think they even they almost started. I think they might have started like Eddie Prince or something like sometime that year. They they benched him sometimes just like just get the other guys reps. And so I was like, hey, I want to do the story. Like, hey, what's it been like? Just like to, you know, going through the season and you know, kind of still being a team leader and all that stuff. And I got the call that hey, he didn't want to uh, he didn't want to talk. He doesn't want to talk for the story and he doesn't want to talk for the rest of the year. And I was like, okay, fair enough. It was like week ten or whatever. And so I was like, okay, fair enough. He had been benched at that point. All that stuff. So I do, I go ahead and write the story. Um, anyway, I write around him, right? I talked, I talked to Brad Elliott, the offensive coordinator at the time. I talked to Withers. I talked to a bunch of, uh, a bunch of teammates. Ooh, see, that's where were, you made the mistake. Well, here's the thing. They were all complimentary. They were like, this, I love this guy. This guy has been the best sport. It's been so hard and unfair for him. Blah, blah, blah. Withers, Elliott, Elliott was like, I love this kid. This kid's like the hardest worker, blah, blah, blah. I thought I was like, it sounds like a great story. And I, I went on with it. It drops. I get a lot of credit for it. And then the next thing I check on Twitter, he blocks me. So <laughs> so that's my relationship with Tyler Jones. Um, but getting back to on the field, yes, they have not had a stable quarterback in almost uh, eight years, I guess, going on something. It feels like a long time because Tyler Jones' You're best year feels like 100 years ago. You're burying the lead there, too, because he got oh, okay. the NFL. He got the NFL grade and decided to come back. God, I forgot about that. I think I was at the media day where somebody asked, uh, I think it was somebody from the Austin media asked Fran, uh, his junior heading into his junior year, actually. He was like, Hey, do you think you can go pro? He's like, Oh, you never know after if he has a good year, or whatever. And yeah, yeah, that, that, was a mistake. I, that was the thing that I remember coming in when because it was my first year covering the team as like a student newspaper person. And I remember yeah. being like, the, the Ohio game was incredible, the next game was Houston. And Houston mm-hmm. was ranked in the top 10 and they had Gary Ward Jr. Heisman candidate, quote unquote, which I mean, like in hindsight's funny, but sure. <laughs> I remember being in, in the stadium and talking to like people and they were like, this is Tyler Jones today. Like this is, sure. this is, this is where he like really like jumps out and maybe we don't upset Houston, but maybe we keep it like a two score game right. and it was 63 to three, like no it was, time. It yeah. was- yeah, that was uh, yeah, that was that was one of the dark days <laughs> where where Houston. Huge, I think it was his first year under Tom Herman. Tailgate atmosphere too. Uh, yeah. I remember because I was drunk at that time. <laughs> <laughs> I I was a ish capital J journalist over here, buddy. I was locked. There you in. go. You were in, you were in the press box with us suffering. I was yeah. reporting live from the field. You know, <laughs> he's like live from the, the parking lot. Yeah, it's I mean, what quarter, you... Jacob, what are you talking about? Talk about gonzo <laughs> journalism. You know, I'm right there in the middle of the Kentucky Derby. Andrew, we've talked a lot about G.J. Kinney's offense. It's going to be high-powered. It's going to be powered by Texas State athletes. We're actually powered by Elite Sports. You know, it's the branding company that partners with athletes across the country to make custom brands, custom clothing. Basically, if you want it, they can put a cool graphic on it. And everything that they have on their site represents you know, an athlete, their vision for what their future looks like after sports. And when you support them, you support them directly, too. So it's pretty cool with their working with the NIL stuff. Jessica Mullins needs to get a shirt on there because she's going to be a traveling nurse. And that ball travels fast out of her hands. So we need to do something with maybe nurse and, and figure out a way to get her a T-shirt. On the defense side, Joshua Eaton from Texas State Football and DJ Jackson. Oh, Dan Foster Jr. too. So be looking out for the release for those two. You can go find all those on EliteSports.com forward slash star. And then use code square at checkout. This actually brings me to my next question, Ish. Is is there a college football writer in the country who is more starved 
for this team to have any sort of success, like in the in this the three of us, yeah. The three of well, us. I right was asking here. then you, but yeah, I guess. The three <laughs> yeah, of us. no, no, it's fair. I, I'll, I'll lump us all in there. We're all we're all one big suffering family. Um, man, no, I'm gonna say no. Like every other team in the FBS has went to a bowl, right? That's like, well, I guess Sam Houston now, but you know, we'll see. Um, but they have a national title in FCS to to lean on, so they don't. They're not. They're not starved. Like, I feel like I hear a lot of my uh, friends from North Texas and some some friends from utsa talk about like especially utsa now it's like they've won the conference and so now it's like a bowl game is kind of like yeah it's cool but like comp- winning the conference is like their is their real thing now north texas i've seen how like lethargic their, their fans are great when they're good but like i've seen how lethargic it comes to bowl games right and i get it sometimes there's so many bowl games that if you go to the frisco bowl it's not going to be a big deal especially for like unt who maybe if they lose the conference usa championship and they don't go to the frisco or they go to the frisco bowl the fans don't want to show out for it even though it's right down the road because they're like screw that we already lost the championship whatever i look at that and i'm like come on there's a bowl there's a bowl in your backyard and you're not going to it like i look at it from the other way of like i would Texas State fans would roll up deep if to like the Green Bowl in New Braunfels, right? The Green Hall Bowl, <laughs> if it was just played at Canyon Stadium in New Braunfels, we would roll up so deep because we just wanted. I don't know. We remember, uh, I don't know if you. I think it was before you guys, uh, the year that they got left out when they were seven and five. Mm-hmm. So we, me and Joe, were like, we were like feeling so many tweets, so many. Just like, it's like, are we going? Are we like we, it was like the rumor was like Arizona Bowl or anything, Camellia Bowl in Alabama, and we knew Texas State was gonna show up deep to that whatever bowl, right? Camellia Bowl, who cares? Like it could have been in anywhere, literally anywhere. It could have been in Monroe, Louisiana against the Warhawks, like ULM, doesn't matter. They would have shown out. And so yeah, I think there's like a big apathy when it comes to like bowl games now because every team's made a bowl and things like that. But man, oh, we're starved, man. We're starved. I I literally have talked to Jacob about this many times, and he yeah. he will attest. This team has caused me so much mental anguish. Like I am straight up, the suicide hotline was like a fat, like a like a dial away a couple times with how bad this team was, bro. Yes. Like yes, and and the fact is that we should be so much better. Like that's that's the thing that bothers. I think that's the thing that bothers me the most because like. Yeah. Casual fans, uh, say a, a freshman coming on campus right now, the scout report on mm-hmm. Texas State football, a new head coach, they've been bad for years. But the people who have like ride and died with this team, it's like an insult to injury because you know there's so many games that like yeah. it's a play like App State in 2018, I think it was, that was in San Marcos and we go 99 yards or 98 yards. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like every other fan base in the country can just roll off and be like, oh, well, we made a bowl game two years ago or a year ago. That's something right. I sleep about. I think about that when I go to bed at night some Saturdays. I'm like, we should have beat App State. Like, yeah, it's just, it's no, pain. it's it's a yeah, it's very looking back on like every every missed opportunity, because like I think they went FBS when I was a sophomore and knowing that they went i think it was four and eight their first year which was actually a solid first year six and six four and eight right i was about to say we'd kill i mean like we were talking about how much the how much how improved they looked when spav went four and eight right we were like oh man this team looks great now um and then six and six and seven and five and missing bowls right and then we see like and, and you guys have you guys have been there since the new rebuilds where it's been you know withers tear down and build up right and you're like Okay, it makes sense, right? We need to t- we need we need like a new foundation, right? It makes sense. So you you buy in. I bought in. I was like, it makes sense. This team has no like legacy in the FBS, so it makes sense to build something new. And then they just never get off the runway, right? It's like they bring in good recruiting classes, they bring in this and that, and it just never takes off. Um, and then you see Spav come in, you're like, okay, here's an offensive guy. He's gonna come, he's gonna scheme it all up, right? He's gonna like take all this talent that didn't develop, develop it all, and we're gonna we're gonna go off into this. And then none of that happens. And then we ch- ch- play like seven different quarterbacks over the last four years. And we're just like, what's happening? You know, like I remember how many times have you talked yourself into uh, Willie Jones? Uh, how many times have you talked yourselves into, I mean, I, I was, I was a Jalen Gibson though. guy. I was a Jalen Gibson. Gibson was a great guy. I, I blame great Ish guy, for great that. Guy. 
Because, you blame me for that. Why do you blame yes, me for that? Because I remember watching Gibson in practice, Willie Jones the third in practice, and being like, I don't know. And then I saw a tweet from you that was like, this is the guy. And I was like, well, if Ish says it's the guy, I guess it's the guy. So to, to be fair, to be fair, uh, Willie Jones looked great. I was then told by somebody who's not on the staff anymore that there was some uh, people in the locker room that he, he got close to that he probably should not have got close to. And that kind of. And well, and that goes to the ever with got on the wrong quote. side of the locker room. Let's put it that way. Goes to the Everett Withers quote where it was like year three, and he's like, yeah. I wouldn't want my family around these guys. I'm like, these are like three years of these guys. Like, what are you talking <laughs> right. about? This is your, this right, is your team. Right. Yes. Yeah, exactly. I was about to say, yeah, exactly. There's, yeah, I mean, and then like doing that and then going to, oh God, who was the first transfer that Spav brought in? Not McBride. Brady was awesome. I don't care. I love, I love that guy. Um, who was the, who was the junior quarterback, junior college quarterback? Gresh Jensen. Do you remember Gresh Jensen? Oh, yeah. Yes. Gresh yes. Jensen. So, That's a deep cut. Right. He was the, he was the first quarterback that they brought in uh, because I think he played under uh, Stitt, Bob Stitt at, in like yes. FCS, I think Montana or Montana. Montana. State. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then they bring in Gresh Jensen and he just was not, was not an FBS player. Just simply not. Um, they bench him. Tyler Vitt comes in. By the way, quick aside. Tyler Vitt deserves an honorary jersey retirement for how much he went through. <laughs> Look, he played through three head coaches, basically. No, I guess two. Two and two head coaches, but like seven offensive coordinators. <laughs> like he played through so much. And every year we're just like, screw it, just throw Vitt in there. It was like every Hold time on. somebody was like on a downturn, you just be like, screw it, just throw Vitt back in there. We just need somebody. You were, you were right. No, it was three head coaches because it was Withers, Spav, and then there was an interim when Withers got fired. So you're right. He, you're right. There you you go. did. You hit it three. You were right the first time. Seven no. OCs and also Jake Spavadol again. You know, <laughs> yeah, he played when he was OC. Yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> yeah. Well, and uh. you know, we we talked to Brady last week about Vit and like the famous Vit hit that I remember in the Rutgers yeah. game, which was like, what the hell are we doing? And then of course UTSA game, which let's talk. We we can talk about the rivalry with UTSA if that's what we want to call it at this point. But that was for um, sure. That was a tough one for me too, because I was a Vit guy. I remember watching him in um in high school when they yeah. announced that he signed. I pulled up his huddle highlights. I was in a chemistry class and bumping the guy next to me. And we were watching his highlights instead of learning about uh you know carbon bonds or whatever. And uh, <laughs> I was ready. I was like, this is the guy. And then you know he got his ass kicked every way till yeah. Sunday, bro. Yeah, he was he was he was given no no help a lot of the times, and he was just known to be basically a, a safety valve. Literally every time they had any shakiness at quarterback, it was like Vit, you're back in. It was like okay, Vit Marcos. There's never a copulation of one. There's never hey, a class listen, action listen, suit. Listen, Vit Marcus, baby. There's never a class action suit for like CTE. He's gonna be the number one name, bro. Because that bro, guy got he, popped. He oh my god, there was so much QB power, so much QB power called with him, man. That's just like it's like screw it, short yardage, QB power. We gotta go. And it didn't make any sense because it was like we had OCs that wanted to move the ball down the field, but by week three, they were like swing pass. That's cooks, screen and ladder. Like, what are we doing? <laughs> it's insane. <laughs> Get some yeah, I'm hoping... to the quarterback. Oh, what? Yeah, yeah, li- yeah. Literally, this is by far the most talented quarterback room they've ever had. So we'll see. Again, well, I, as much as I want to, what I do like about this, this one, what the, about this quarterback room is that they're all different, right? Like, like Malik Hornsby is obviously like the one that you probably pencil in as like the the preferred type, right? The runner who can throw in a little bit, but he's mostly going to be using the RPO. TJ Finley does not run at all, but he has a cannon, right? He's 6'6". He's huge. He has SEC playing experience. Um, even guys like, I'm trying to remember, um, I think they're still on the roster, but I feel like CJ Rogers might not be um, come the Derek end of the year. Mata. But like, yeah, Derek Mott, like uh, PJ Hatter, who they really like as a freshman, like they're different types of quarterbacks. So obviously Finley and Hornsby is going to be the battle, but I like that they're different types of quarterbacks. So you're not like, pigeonholing yourself into like one type of offense necessarily um again i think hornsby will, will win out they're still very tight-lipped on that that's like that's not even me reporting that that's like th- talking to them on the side they're literally like yeah nah, we don't know yet like i think it's partially because finley came in late so they haven't really seen finley and so they don't want to really say hornsby now and then finley comes in and torches it so who knows but i i mean like this it feels like if they don't fix the quarterback this year or in the next over the next couple of years, 
it's just like Texas State's going to be one of those teams that just never has a quarterback. Wildcat. No, it's like, and you know, <laughs> might, you, might as well. You, you're talking about like not knowing who the quarterback is, and they mm-hmm. they have a a, a, a built in excuse because Finley did he get here late? But I swear to baby Jesus and everything holy, if we're at the Jackson State game and we're running yeah. a platoon where it's like one series, one series, you know, whoever does it's it, bad. It'd be, it'll, might, it'll be bad if that's yeah. I, I might go skirt scorch hurt. I might, yeah. I might have to. I might be that upset. Well, because like <laughs> the thing is too is that GJ, come on, brother, like let's do it. Like pick a no, guy. Like, oh, no, no, and I th- and I think he will. To be fair, I think he will. Yeah. Um, because I th- yeah, there because of the fact that I think they're different. I don't think you go in with two game plans, right? So I don't think you call. I don't think you say, well, here's the Finley playbook and here's the Malik Hornsby playbook. Is like. You name a guy and then you go in with a playbook and you say, this is what we're running this week. And so, again, I think it will be Millie Cornsby. They did a, they had a ton of effort in beating out Nebraska for him. They've guaranteed, like, more or less guaranteed that he's playing quarterback. So, like, I feel like you don't pick Texas State unless you have a pretty good idea that you're going to start. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I, I would, I if I had to, if I had to guess, I'm leaning 75-25 right now just because, again, they haven't seen, we haven't seen Finley. So, that's the only reason that it's that, uh, that close in the first place. But if my gut had to say it's 90, 90, 10 Malik. And I can report from the Midwest ish Nebraska fans, yeah. not big Hornsby fans anymore. In fact, I'd argue yeah. Hornsby haters. So if there's ever, <laughs> if there's ever any sort of like crazy threats, blame big red, because those guys are insane. Uh, <laughs> uh, I put them up there with AM fans when it comes to just like delusion meets money meets insanity. They're, they're Fair. a different level of crazy. They were really That's glad fun. when squaring around actually broke the story that Malik was not a student at Nebraska. So that was cool. <laughs> they ran him out of town. <laughs> oh, yeah. I forgot about that. There was like the directory, like that. All the, the controversy yeah. with the director is like, oh, he's, like, not he's a, here. He's not enrolled yet. He is here. He's not here. Yeah. Yeah. So I just hit up the registrar's office. And they were like, nope. See ya. Don't let the door <laughs> hit you on the way out. Hell yeah. Recently, I was going to a Minnesota Twins uh, baseball game, Jacob, and I was wearing my Minnesota Golden Gophers 1954 championship shirt. And you know how many good people came up to me to say, hey, my grandfather was on that team. It was one, but it was one more than I thought at Target Field. Well, I'd be Home shocked Field, if they didn't. Those are pretty. Home Field does a great job with these shirts. It's a good throwback action for some of these. It's, it's one of those deals where, like, if you like that throwback look, this is the place for you. And if you like the newer looks, too, they got a, a bunch of really cool new designs that come out. It feels like every other week they're announcing a new school or a new design uh, for these uh, schools. Yeah. No, they're, it's a crazy new look for each team, basically, that they have. The best seller this week was actually the Yukon Dairy Bar shirt. Mm. So, nah, I saw those on Twitter. Those look pretty cool. Mm-hmm. So if you use code Square for anything on home field. Get fifteen percent off your order if you're a first time use or first time orderer. Ten percent off if you're a returning orderer. And we Which think I would be. Yeah. So so I'll get my ten percent off. Mm-hmm. Back to the show. So rivalry with UTSA. Um, Oof, you know, we got to okay. talk about it. So I guess, is it, can, is it a rivalry ish? I and mean, you've lived here, you've been in this like pain and suffering longer than we have. However, yeah. I do, I do think that me taking my family to the game that Marcus Davenport almost killed multiple Texas state players, uh, <laughs> puts me as like an honorary, like pain, like Colonel on the pain brigade. Yeah. But, uh, mm-hmm. let's, let's go. Let's floor is yours. I think uh, on paper, yes. On paper, it's a rivalry, right? On paper. It, they, there was a trophy played for it. I don't know if they're bringing it back, but there was a trophy that HEB sponsored at one point. The golden, uh, the golden cart? Shopping cart, yeah. The, it should have it should have been the gold. No, it was like it was like a stupid just ball trophy or whatever. I don't know, but it, it should have been a golden. No, it should have been a, a traffic cone. It's the Battle of I-35. It should have been a traffic cone. Um, but again, it, it has a name, right? Battle of I-35. Uh, it has fan bases that at one point hated each other. I don't know if you remember this. UTSA's president had to apologize in 2018 because I believe it was a frat house or something put a poster that depicted like a very explicit image of a roadrunner and a bobcat. And UTSA's president had to apologize to Texas State saying, yeah, actually, that's not that's not cool. Like we, we, that, that went too far. You know, like this on paper, it's a rivalry. Shouldn't have apologized. But, yeah, culture. Like, 
<laughs> well, culture, Ron, baseball team still has that same rivalry. So I don't there, know. It's know, dissipated baseball, across Both baseball multiple. teams are good. So like yeah. that helps. Um, but football wise, I don't think UTSA cares as much. Um, I think they're more concerned with other like programs like UNT. If I'm being honest, you, them and uh, them and UNT played for the Conference USA Championship last year. They're going to be rivals again in, in the AAC. And so I think that UTSA in football has kind of turned its head a little bit to focus on North Texas as more of a rival. They've had more competitive games, right? I th- I'd say I'd argue that it's probably not a rivalry to them until we're within a couple touchdowns, <laughs> uh, which we were the I know we were the last time, but like that was the only time. Um, Makeup. Yeah, it was it was yeah, yeah. trash garbage so, points at the end, too. Right, right. No, trust me that 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 game, you could probably do an oral history on like both teams after that game. Um, but. On paper, yes, it is. But to like the lay person, if you if this was 20, if this is 2015, 2016, yeah, UTSA probably like, yeah, screw those guys. But now they're probably like, yeah, I hope we beat them, but I'm not really too worried about it. Um, which again, that's up to Texas State to change, right? That's up to Texas State to be like to, to make it competitive and to get them to care again. UTSA's main rival in a couple of years is going to be Houston because they're going to be stealing their coach. That is <laughs> that is who their main rival will be. Listen, yeah, uh, that's 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 going to be something to watch potentially, because now that now that he's uh, now that he's starting to get into his last year with Frank Harris and all that, it starts to be like, all right, do you start looking elsewhere because your your quarterback's gone? And I don't know, you already yeah. turned down the jobs last year. So what happens now? Best quarterback in Texas, according to uh, Dave Campbell. Hey, Frank look, you're, tra- you're, you're trying to trap me there. I will proudly wear that. No, that's fine. That's fine. <laughs> I just I'm looking at it this way, like, you know. What is he that good? Sure, maybe, but I, you know, give me Chandler Morris at TCU. Even if it's not Chandler Morris, even if it's not, I like don't don't make me say bad things about Chandler Morris. Oh my gosh, that's funny. I'll defend. Well, I I dug back into my Rolodex and uh, Everett Withers after the last UTSA game. Right, that was the game Mm -hmm. where Vit had that uh, sack basically to end the game. Uh, was that the one where they called the quarterback draw from the end zone? Exactly. Okay. Excellent. That was, that was the worst, I'm sorry. That was the worst play call. Everybody's ever favorite game. Yeah. Yeah. I got kicked Dude. out of the press box too for cheering the press box. I didn't know all the rules yet. But uh, did you have to defend it ish? That's the real question here. Like, did other people come up to you and ask like, what the hell happened? Oh no, no, I, I was not. Well, I wasn't a beat writer at that time. Uh, I was at that was I think that was my first or second year, Dave Campbell's. But regardless, that was the worst play call I've ever seen in my life. Like that will ah. that goes down. You're you're on your own one yard line. You call a quarterback draw, and you know your offensive line can't block. I don't know what else you want me to say. I think only down by the six or something too at that point. They were it was within reach. There was the game somehow. I don't know that again. That team was not very good, but that team was uh, somehow. I don't know. I don't. I don't know. That was a that was a special. I want I want to talk to a lot of those coaches off the record about that. I haven't ran into them uh, since. I know a couple of them, but I want to talk to some of those coaches where it was like, yeah, do y'all remember that play call? What 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 happened there? The Alamo Dome wasn't packed either. And uh, no, yeah, because it was like game, both teams Rowdy. were kind of like, yeah, eh. like you, Texas State was obviously. Eh. And then I think like the Frank Wilson love had kind of like faded a bit for UTSA. So it was it was a time where they could have beaten them easily. And then that same game, Rowdy, the roadrunner beat up Boko. They like just jumped him on the sideline. I was like, what's going on here? And so, yeah, I don't know. And then everybody in the so press box ways. that was San Antonio media was cheering for UTSA. So when Texas State scores, I, you know, let out a little cheer, get scolded, well, thrown out of the press box. You know, whatever. That's the problem. Is you're, love in lost. you're in their hometown. That's why I hope so. they tear it down. There's a big movement in the city to tear down the Alamo Dome and make some sort of, you know, Globe Life times whatever you know that the Rangers have and do yeah. like something for the missions downtown and then something new for UTSA question mark. I don't know if they would <laughs> if they would build out far west and you know on the oh, northern right. side or whatever. Luck and yeah, what, what that. is the deal? What's the deal with you university star riders about tearing down stadiums? Famously trying to more green over... spaces, Andy. I'm sorry. Golly, you guys are more the worst. Spaces. More green spaces. <laughs> green spaces. I love it. By the way, I'm watching that highlight. So I found a clip of that game. Uh, the exact situation was ball on the one. Texas State. It was 23 21 UTSA. Two minutes to go in the fourth quarter, and on first down. They call a quarterback draw and they get stuck for safety oh. and Texas State loses. So, we, yeah, First I told the story. Down. I told the story last week to Brady. I'll repeat it to you. 
I came into my calculus class the next day or like that Monday. And there was girls who don't keep, did not keep up with football like that, but had me explain why we made that play call. And that was, (laughs) that was when it was like, yeah, this is it. This is one of, yeah, that's one of those scenarios. Huh? You're pre-med? Where are you taking Cal? Because I'm a genius, bro. What degree plan are you on? That I'm, you I'm need Cal for what you do. I'm a, I was about to say, what is I was about to say, I'm not I don't know any of us taking Cal. I took, I'm not here I took this major to not have to take math classes. Okay? No, no, no. So, I'm a, people forget that I'm a genius. Like, no, all right. They just, they it just they seems just like every moving. time you're like, oh, I was in this class. It was like, yeah, I was in biochemistry three. Uh, the, <laughs> <laughs> talking to Brady McBride. Like, yeah, you weren't. <laughs> what class were you in? No, me and him, me, we have pop culture studies together. Me and Brady were not in like some genius class together by any means. I was but, in surgery uh, 302 the other day. Yeah. <laughs> fucking surgery ridiculous. Lab. What kind of what, yeah. <laughs> what kind of catalog does course catalog does Texas State have? <laughs> me and, it goes all over the place, man. Uh, you were you were graduated as an electronic media major. What do you mean? You're taking <laughs> calculus. <laughs> Jacob's like, I took the same classes as you. Shut up. <laughs> Less too, because say... mine was just a straight print track, you know. So yeah, I, sure, yeah, I only went up to like print. the baby stats, you know, where you're using a calculator for everything. That's a good no. That was that was me. That was me. I walked no. into my business. I walked into business. Oh yeah, you were a business a, minor, right? Freshman. Yeah. yeah, when I was a freshman, I was a. I went to uh, no sophomore. I wanted a business calc two. Literally the first day of classes, I walk into business calc two. I was like, man, business calc one was tough, but you know it's good. I'm about to get into the get into my marketing major, all that stuff. Business Calc 2, I think it was my second or third class of the day. Go in there. There's no syllabus day, which is what it's supposed to be, right? They just go right into the lectures. I didn't yep. buy the book yet. And so I'm like, oh, hell no. And so I walk out at the end of class, pretend to take notes because I'm like, I'm not staying in this major. I'm just like pretending to take notes. And then I literally walk from the math building to uh, Old Main. And I'm like, hey, how do I, how do I become a journalism so major? <laughs> I, I was a business minor. That's probably the reason why I had to do these Cal classes. Um, yeah. I had to do uh, business law. The professor was an SEC ref. Uh, business law was dope. Uh, business law was dope. I'll say that that, that was one. I, thing I, I, I did not like that class, but he passed me with like a B because I would go into his office hours and talk about like how Auburn cheats every week. And oh. that was, yeah, no, it was great. You just oh okay I I I respect that actually. I'd come I up there that. and be like you catch he'd be like you catch the old miss game I'm like yeah and then we would just chat about you know the egg bowl and I would he'd be like all right yeah that paper you wrote on uh the whatever fucking bird law yeah that was awful <laughs> but you know but here's a b <laughs> he knows he knows tiger football so he's in so <laughs> That's, That's actually awesome. the reason I got a D in algebra, which is not a passing grade. I ended up retaking that class. Um, but uh, I would go into the, my professor's office hours and he knew I wrote for the paper. I was writing news. I was just tweeting about the football team every now and then. Uh, mm-hmm. but he would just go on these like Colin Kaepernick rants when I would walk into his office for office hours. Oh, and no. I, yeah, it was <laughs> crazy. <laughs> When you get tenure, man, you start acting different. <laughs> that's, a, that's a good point. That's a good point, man. Oof. I had a... Uh... I had a poli sci professor who would just get into arguments with, with every libertarian in the class. Like it was just like everybody would he would stand up and be like, uh, because you know, you have in the lecture halls, you'd have like the one student, the couple students that like tried to show off or they tried to debate insane. something. Yeah, exactly. Who were crazy, who were not like just sitting in the class, absorbing the lecture and regurgitating on the test, which is being a good NPC. Yeah. Exactly. What you're supposed to do. You're just supposed to be an NPC in those lectures. They were trying to be main characters. And the, our professor just loved ripping them to shred. And like in the most condescending way, it was like, well, actually, I actually don't believe in the, the federal government where it's like, really? You don't? Are you on loans? That's the federal government. Like, like those, those type of things. Like, are you on loans? Are you paying this through by yourself? Really? Not out of your own pocket? Okay, sit down, libertarian. See, like, like, but oh, you were, like, oh my God, what's but happening? You were in school. You were in school and people had like a semblance of like decency. We came in, we came in <laughs> in the fall before Trump. So That's I, a good had point. A, yeah. I had an ethics class where a dude, we were talking about like transgender rights or whatever. Guy yeah. dressed up like a chicken the next class. Oh, no. <laughs> he's, so he's trying to prove a point like, oh, well, I identify mm-hmm. the blah, blah, blah. Because so, they all have one joke. It's that it's the identify joke. And that's all they have. 100 percent. So that's what I'm saying. Like you, you had crazy people, but we had like a different level of like. <laughs> 
That's fair. Free, like these that, worm that brain is, people. That's a good point. I remember, yeah, yeah. The, the ah, that's crazy because like it's only like a four year window, but that is a crucial, a crucial window. Because the only crazy thing we had was, I mean, you guys had this too. It was just the preachers in the quad. In mm-hmm. the quad, that was it. Like that was the crazy to us. That was like, oh, that's wild, right? And y'all guys have, yeah, y'all guys had just like lunatics and like. We had Turning flyers. Point USA. <laughs> I was about to say, we had y'all Turning Kirk. Point trying to hijack the the student body government <laughs> race or whatever. I remember that. Doug, that, that's what I was up to right before I started covering the football team. Actually, so <laughs> it was a nice reprieve to be like, oh wow, this team can only win two games in a season. So what's what's <laughs> more shocking to you, Jacob, that Turning Point USA almost like stole democracy at Texas State, or that Spavadol's offense didn't work with Brady McBride? What was what's the more shocker? <laughs> You know what's weird, too, is that in that four-year period, when that homeless guy chained himself to the Stallions, that wasn't even, like, really that big of news, like, at Texas State. Like, See, that, I don't even remember that. That's why, like, I was in San Marcos still, and I did not even know that happened. So, like, that's how much crazy stuff happened in those in those years. I, I was on a date, and I ran out because somebody texted me. They're like, hey, they just arrested that guy at the Stallion statue for trying to take a shit in the bucket. And I ran from the square. <laughs> To the stallion statue. It's like December, like right about. Do, like, do, do you leave her with the bill? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you leave her with so the I bill. I saw this guy yeah, getting I arrested. I had to talk to the police about it. It was horrible. You got it, right? You got it, right? I got to go. Yeah, we're separate right now. This is only the, you know, this is only a second <laughs> date. What are you going to do? <laughs> that's a good, that's a good move. Good move. I'm going to use that next time I need to get out of a date. Homeless guy. <laughs> yeah, there's, a homeless guy getting getting arrested. there's a homeless guy getting kicked out of Texas State right now. <laughs> gotta go i'm surprised like more stuff doesn't happen around the stadium but then there's like not a lot of things that happen around the stadium in general to be honest like <laughs> like it's like it, it's like just off campus <laughs> enough yeah exactly like you can't even win over there so you know. <laughs> they're all gone at halftime so it doesn't really matter <laughs> mm-hmm. i i saw one fight in the stadium parking lot and it was between a ui i think it was a uiw fan and a texas state fan um but yeah, was no. it last year or was it two years ago when they when they got beat by UIW? I think it was two years ago. <laughs> oh, okay. was it, I was about to say. I was about to say they were the alpha in that situation. They, yeah. you, had, you had to give it up to them then. Man. They kicked their ass <laughs> on and off the field. Yeah, and, then, and then we hired all of them to bring it back. <laughs> And then we say, hey, that was great. Can you do that over here? <laughs> just throw money at the problem. Just turn this into the Dallas Cowboys and continuously spend money. <laughs> Reach the cap. <laughs> Doesn't matter. Just keep spending. Doesn't matter. Whatever you do, just win. I'll be honest with you guys, because I said this before. I would be okay with us breaking rules if it meant we won. Like, oh, trust. I would love to cheat. (laughs) I would love to cheat. Are you kidding me? I'm throwing my journalistic ethics out the window. Cheat. I don't care. There's a. I believe last year it was a. a, a, Who was it? Oh, Terry. So this is a basketball reference, but this is this. It has a point. Terrence Shannon from Texas Tech was transferring. Uh, to either Michigan or Illinois. He ended up going to Illinois, but he had committed to Michigan. But then it came out that he didn't qualify for Michigan's transfers and didn't he lacked credits and all this stuff. So he had to go to Illinois. And I'm sitting there like, what do you do? Cheat. Get him the credits. Make up a course. I don't care. <laughs> like you're Michigan. Make up say like, hey, look, here's your new transcript signed by the dean. You're in Michigan. Like we don't care. Like, I would love to cheat. I am all for if you're oh. a top program, you cheat. I'm sorry. You uh, cheat. That's all you do. <laughs> I'm about to get real tin hat for you here, Ish. Harry oh, Styles here class. Here, Harry Styles class. I think that's a way that we funnel players in through the transfer portal. Well, also, well, Harry Styles Styles baseball's class. Tony Roby helped create that class, too. So, yeah. Yeah. okay. Yes. Harry Styles. No, we, you know what? That, who else is doing something, something like there. that? Who else is doing something like that? So now we have like a British history, like, kind of path for people you like oh it's pop culture whatever and you can right. go get like hey quinn yours you know dave campbell's doesn't even think you're the second best quarterback in the state why are you coming out of san marcus yeah lip sync for your final brady yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god i'm all for this you know what that's that's something that is so i forgot they had that course Did they had it last year or this year it was last year was their first uh i okay. think in the spring it was their first semester with it and then it's going to be like okay the other semester because it's like an honors college i was an honors college minor so i took okay. the math first. actually that matt damon does in goodwill hunting <laughs> do you like apples yeah well i got a number how do you like them, Matt? <laughs> the worst guy. Oh, yeah, Texas State does have an insane catalog. 
Yeah. yeah. Graph theory, everybody. Good God. You're talking you're talking to geniuses over here, Ish. Um <laughs> I don't know what else to tell you, man. Uh what is your prediction for the, the record for Bobcats? Ooh. Um, I think in the magazine, I think I'm gonna go different from the magazine, but I think in the magazine we had like four, four and eight. What does your I heart tell you? As I, an know, alumni? I, th- I think I'm gonna go one more. I think I'm gonna go five. Okay. Mm. I think five is very respectable. Um, I will say I thank the Lord every day that Deion Sanders took Colorado. Give me my theme music. <laughs> Because I don't want to be his, I don't want his Jackson State to be the first highlight game. reel. Highlight reel. That would have been terrifying. I would have. When Sanders I saw that on the blog. Oh yeah, hundred percent. When when I when I saw that schedule come out before you taking the Colorado job, I was like, no, don't have this be the first home game of GJ Kinney. I don't need Shadur Sanders. I don't need texting to be on Shadur Sanders draft highlights. Okay. I don't need on, on Saturday or on Thursday when he's getting taken and he's just seeing getting thrown a bomb, a perfect bomb in the Bobcat stadium. I don't need to see that. So Josh Allen, Josh that- Allen, Josh Allen famously, yes. famously Came beat the stadium. dog yeah. piss out of us. And then we had to, I, I remember when he beat the Vikings his rookie year, a yeah. podcast was like, do you know the Texas State Bobcats, which I don't even know where they're at. Their words, not mine. Uh, yeah. <laughs> don't even know where they're at. Held Josh Allen to fewer passing yards and rushing yards than the Minnesota Vikings. So it was like that a double stab ruin for me. I was about to say, it's like the biggest backhanded compliment ever. It's like this nobody team that nobody's heard of. <laughs> That's yeah. awesome. Oh, man. Bad. Not yeah. awesome. Very bad. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm going to say five. I think five. I think they didn't get an easy draw with the conference schedule. I think they got an easier draw than they probably could have gotten, but it's still not easy. They still go to Coastal. Um, they still host South Alabama, who looks really good this year. Uh, host Georgia Southern. Let me see. I'm trying to look. The one that I'm I'm worried about Coastal, but I'm also like also know that they bring in a new staff. Grayson McCall still there, so I still think they'll be the team to beat, but I'm not sold on Tim Beck as a head coach right now. Um, Were you sold on Louisiana, Tim Beck as an OC? I'm, uh, not, I never was sold on him as an OC either. Um, Louisiana is not Louisiana anymore, right? Um, so uh, we'll see, right? There's some there's some toss up games in there that I'm like intrigued by, but I think still I probably still give the edge to Coastal because Grayson Call still there. The guy the likes of South Alabama, Georgia Southern, Troy. I still think are a little a little too little a bridge too far. Um, but I'm, I will say I'm very intrigued by that Baylor game because I don't think they can win. I have no idea what Baylor is. And they're like, you look at the, what they added in the offseason. They added like decent pieces, but like they were like, they took a step back last year, which Tech State hung around longer than they should have. If they're around the same and Texas State did get better theoretically, right? First game of the season, so who knows what happens in those, right? Both teams may be different a month a month later. I don't know. I think that I trust me, I think Baylor will win by, you know, I'll probably take the spread and whatever it's announced, but I'm very intrigued by that game because Texas State it would not shock me if Texas State came up and it was similar to last year where it's like they're up by 10 only at halftime and we're like what's happening here? I'm chalking it up as an L already, only because GJ told me, uh, I was like, hey, what do you need to do now? And, you know, on then, whenever, September 2nd, I think we're like 39, 38 days away from when they kick Something off. Something like that, yeah. Uh, but I was like, what do you need to do to be successful? And he said, practice, because people aren't going to know where to line up. Coach, another Zoom question from Jacob Rodriguez. Looking ahead to Baylor, what does the team need to do between now and then to be successful September 2nd? Uh, uh, have a couple of practices. Um, we haven't done anything yet. Uh, we got to get out there. We have so many new faces. Uh, guys aren't even going to know where to, to, to line up for practice. So um, we got to get together as a team and, and um, really start that bond and start that love for each other. Um, and that only happens, um, you know, through hard work and, uh, you know, during fall camp. <laughs> Uh, sorry guys. you know what he's being hey he's being honest man he's that, being that's, honest. it was just like a you know i don't know i was used to the other answers you know yeah. the other dj he was in his like dark ken mode you know right. <laughs> I'm just kid, but I see the love she sees a friend. 
he's he's starting to like actually realize the season's around the corner. He's like, damn, I really we got it. We got to we got to have a game plan ready to go. If only I had well, more so, time. Bubble I, screen, I'm, bubble screen, bubble screen. I'm saying this <laughs> is that every coach at some point has the fa- not the fan base, the media. Well, let's be real here. The media part of the fan base at some point, yes. every one of these coaching tenures, they lose us. <laughs> I'm I'm my my curious is is this at what point does GJ just get sick of us at what point is it like that square and round pod it's just every week you know what I mean like yeah. every week it's something with those guys yeah I'm wondering at what point that is is it when Jacob says you couldn't beat Lafayette and I have to correct him for the hundredth time that's Louisiana no it's like, ULL I listen I, out, of, out of spite for so many years when they switched to you louisiana i was like i'm not calling them louisiana i'm calling them louisiana lafayette now it's just easier just to say louisiana but for like three years i refused to say louisiana <laughs> i'll change it if they change their school name you know but they still are the <laughs> university of louisiana lafayette you can't just <laughs> say it because you're our athletics to pro or our athletics department goes by tx state bobcats like what am i gonna do just do that you know <laughs> <laughs> good point not a bad point not a bad point. No, it's a terrible point. Don't give him that ish. Because <laughs> every quick, week I'm going to have to correct it. Quick media day takes. Immediately the Sunbelt conference yeah. of Zoom link broke. So that kind of sucked because I, I was oh, just watching no. on ESPN like everybody else. Right, right, right. I was, and, yeah, I was uh, trying to watch they it They did the – I thought Texas State was kind of snubbed because they just had uh, Jordan Revels to make the Sunbelt all second team defense, which I was like – Yeah, I, I, I'm under Spears Bobcat. maybe. I was about to say, I think Spears probably could have made it, but... Um, you guys had him on the second team defense for the All-Texas team. Yes, we did. We had him. They needed a uh, Texas State uh, person. That's what that was. Don't get it No, Spears is legitimately, Spears legitimately good. Um, I think Spears is going to be... Uh, we, he had, we had him on the postseason uh, defense last year. I think we had him and, him and Levi Bell last year, I think, actually. Um, we had a couple guys last year. Uh, but no, I think Spears is going to be really good. I, he, he is, uh, I think he was a snub as well. Uh, Revels... For somebody who, I don't know, I feel like Revels was more, I, I liked Revels last year, but I'm, I'm wondering if that was more of like a lack of other options, just because he wasn't like a necessarily like, if there was one guy to make it, I thought it would have been Spears. Um, let's put it that way. I think Revels is good, but I don't know if he was like the odds on, like, we got to get this guy on the Sunbelt team, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then they, they league entirely picked Texas State to finish fifth in the West. So I was like, ah, you know, that's, I guess, better. It's ahead of, yeah. what is that, Arkansas State and, yeah. ULM. Yeah, that ULM. I'm very yeah, ULM. ULM. There you go. Um ULM will be interesting just because they lost their only good player in Chandler Rogers at quarterback. Um, so I have no idea how good slash bad they'll be. And Arkansas State, I don't know. I keep feeling I'm used to seeing them at the top of the conference, so it's definitely still weird for me to see them be one of the worst teams over the last couple of years. So we'll see. Butch Jones ruined his career. I tell everybody that will listen to this. When he took that job, I said, that's a bad job, dude. You're not going to – this isn't going to work, and it hasn't. And I'm a genius. Who would have guessed it? You right. It's proving yeah. you right. And, by the way, can we all laugh that James Madison's still not eligible for a championship? That's like – that's I don't. I don't know if it's just pettiness for me because, like, I remember that whole fan base coming at us when Withers took the job, and like, I have a bad, I have just like a bad interaction with that fan base. But I, the college football fan in, in me is saying they should be eligible, but also the pettiness in me is saying like, ha, that's what you guys get. I think this for is nothing. Great. I don't even know what they're deserved. But and then they I, took I, Alonzo Sule, so you know, they did take Alonzo. They really Sule. are tit for tat with Texas State a lot. I'm like I'm on the leather couch here with Dr. Johnson because I never understood why I hated JMU so much. And now I know you just like it's a breakthrough. It's like, oh, that's right. They go. were dicks about Withers. <laughs> that's they right. They were dicks about Withers. And they got better without him. I don't know why they were dicks about him. Ben DiNucci. <laughs> they won Ben DiNucci. There you go. That's a, there's a connection for all you Cowboy fans out there. JMU yeah. legend. Disgusting. Hate him. Ish, this was great. Thank you, man. Yeah, thank you so much, Ish. We appreciate oh, it. Oh, yeah. No, this is awesome. We'll have to do it during the season sometime uh, in a good or bad way, depending on how that goes. Welcome I think, back. I think, uh, I don't know. I still hate press conferences. I'll be honest with you. <laughs> After we did, this is the outro, by the way. I hate press conferences because that's all media day is. And you know what? It's not supposed to be. It's about being there. It's about basically every coach is going to tell you the same thing right like we're gonna have a great year we're gonna be better than the rankings suggest and we're gonna be better than the preseason awards suggest and quite possibly better than what dave campbell's texas football suggests i don't know 
Look, I, I think they're pretty spot on about their projections for Texas State. I said six and six. You said six and six. They say four and eight. So I get it. But here's the big thing. So Sunbelt Media Day, to put a cap on it, you watched it. You would watch it live. I watched the clips afterwards. I talked to some people that were there. Uh, the conversation around the conference is essentially the same thing that we said 12 months ago about the conference. Like, all right, we know who's good. We know who's going to struggle. Um, what do we expect from the best teams? Kind of the same thing. They're the only teams that I think have an opportunity to make a big step this year. Ironically, are the two teams that really leaned in the FCS. GJ Kenny and then Old Dominion, they got the uh, number one offensive coordinator probably in the country who took, uh, uh, what's it called? He took a, a team that was averaging 20 points per game to 50 points per game. He's at uh, uh, Old Dominion now. So there's going to be more offense in the conference this year, allegedly, but it is, does that translate to wins for Texas State, most importantly, but also for the other teams in the conference that have like leaned into the offensive side of the ball? Apart from the Republic of Football uh, podcast network, we did, as a squaring around podcast network, <laughs> you know, we do three shows on here, great podcasts, square talks, and squared around, uh, in addition to the Republic of Football show, I created an ODU podcast <laughs> called Norfolk's Given. Hit me up. <laughs> yeah. If you use that, you will be sued. This is copyrighted right now. I'm speaking it into existence, literally into a microphone. So now we have that creative copyright on it. Yeah, you're gonna have to pay us big money. Yeah, you're big not gonna money. Get Elon, if you want you're that. not gonna be able to kick us off X, Elon. All right. Yeah, and if you create the website domain, well, hey, you know. But I said it first, at least in this podcast. We'll take you to court. It'll be yeah, a we'll long legal battle. We might not win, but it will drain both of our bank accounts. What, what uh, celebrity TV judge do we? work that out to in like small claims court steve harvey period steve harvey? Ooh, end, end that's story fun. yeah dun, dun, no dun. that's easy we asked a hundred people if you should get your domain website back <laughs> here are the answers put it on the board yeah Sit on it! i love ish man i'm glad ish he I'm, I'm glad he was a good hang. I'm glad that he was him and Mike both were just really incredible stuff. They are the top two uh, interviews. I think we've done so far. I really enjoyed them. I'm jealous because my like sports media experience at the star and Texas state was like split in half. Like while I was going to school, like four years, I was at Texas state. Like I was doing two years of basically hard investigative reporting. And the last two years was kind of like a mix. Like I was going to games and writing uh, kind of like a beat reporter, but like, not really. Like everybody knew I was doing other things on the side. I was just really passionate about sports. You can be so. a beat reporter and do other things. Well, yeah, no, like, but like, I think when you're a beat reporter, at least in the traditional sense, like that's what you do, you know, like you're Kev Chardello. You can do other things. You can do other things. I'm just saying it was a little different because like you got to sit alongside like Ish when he was still at the record and, uh, you know, a couple of the other guys that were still there, Nick, you know. Drew. I Drew. mean, but like, you know, they don't, I mean, let's Cedric be Golden. Here. Shout out Cedric Golden. We met Cedric him. Cedric Golden, SMU. yeah. Yeah. Kirk, uh, Kirk. Bulls. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Old like. Statesman I, guys that aren't there anymore because the Statesman, like, got rid of half of its staff. Cut everybody. Yeah, I mean, look at me. Andrew. Oh, so you're like, I wish I would have been able to hang out with these people more. What has that done for me? <laughs> I just yeah. have, I know people. Like, okay. It was, uh, it was a, a fun experience. It gave me a lot of uh, good work. I, I have been able to cultivate a lot of friendships but i don't think that that i think you did the same thing i think you're fine yeah it, it's just fun to reminisce you know because like you know when you're like really going through it with somebody like eating uh kind of subpar almost room temperature food in the press box and then like you get to talk about like how shitty this team is and then that you're poor also and you're kind of all have this dream in mind you know it creates like a brotherhood in there and it's hot a lot of the times people don't realize that they kill the AC the days leading up to the game, and then they turn it on, and then people are just in and out of doors all the time. So it's not very cool in there. It's true. So shout out to Ish, shout out to everybody else that covers this team, and shout out the Sunbelt. I was really impressed with their media production. A lot of songs. The uh, Keith Gill, Sunbelt commissioner, came out to the Sugar Hill Gang's "Rapper's Delight," and uh, you know GJ Kinney and his team came out to Lil Baby's "Lowdown." So very fun to write about. I also have a preview, or not a preview, I guess a wrap-up, basically, of Sunbelt Conference Media Days as it pertains to the lone star of the Sunbelt Conference, Texas State. So, fun stuff. And thanks for letting me write, Ish. I, I like writing about sports, too. So, thanks for listening, everybody. 
know, I think we bring a, a unique style of play to the conference. Um, I know everyone has their version of the spread. We feel like, you know, we're, we're pretty unique in what we do uh, with, our, with our tempo and our splits and uh, being a run play action team. Um, and, and really, we just take what the defense gives us. There's nothing, um, you know, too crazy about what we do. I think it's, you know, the, about the people in the room, uh, the way we go about our business day in and day out. Um, but yeah, I, I think, um, you know, I think we'll bring a unique style of play to, to the conference. We ain't got no badges. We don't need no badges. I don't have to show you any stinking badges. Better not come any closer. Thanks for listening. New episodes out every Thursday. Follow the boys on Twitter. Eat them up. Eat them up.